the one liter turbo petrol segment is a really competitive one and it is really hard to select which one is the right fit for you. Today we have with us the turbo petrol flag bearers in the form of the Maruti Suzuki Franks and the Renault Kiger. And we'll be putting them head to head in this video and figure out what are the hits and misses that each one has against the other. I am Uday Singh and you're watching Car Lelo. Do make sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video and hit the bell icon for notifications whenever we put out new videos. Before we begin, I'd like to introduce our editor, Mr. Prithvi Radhakrishna, who will be joining me in this discussion and dwelling more light on the topic. Thank you there for having me on board. Now let's begin. Alright, straight off the bat, let's talk about the exterior of these two cars. So sir, what's your take on the looks? See, when we look at the exterior in terms of how they look, both of them have their distinctive qualities in terms of the way they appeal to the naked eye. Right. For instance, when I look at the Maruti Suzuki Franks, it actually provides me the look and the feel factor of a crossover. While when I compare the Kaiga with that, this one is more upright, it has a SUV stance, therefore it looks more sporty in nature. So out of these two, which one would you go for? So again, this is a personal opinion. I personally like the look of the Renault Kaiga here and the split headlamp and DRL unit looks really nice, it goes really well. Also the triple LED elements over there, two for low beam, one, uh, three for high beam, right? They look really nice in the night as well. Another point uh, that I'd like to uh, mention here is the use of chrome on both these cars, in fact. So it's very subtle, right? Unlike as major car manufacturers usually do these days as they they like to put out a lot of chrome in the front and make it more flashy. But it's very watered down here and very subtle and it does look nice. Yeah, the use of chrome seems to have been uh, sobered down yeah. and, you know, that is something that even customers are now coming to terms with that right. it does not have to be more blingy. Right. Uh, now when I talk about the Franks for example, again it's got this split LED headlamps and all of that going for it. Yeah. The chrome bar also looks nice. The piano black finish is also giving it an added touch. Right. But at the end of the day, you know, uh, both of them have distinctive appeals. So therefore again, if you personally ask me, I would like to go for the Franks. Right. Alright, let's talk about the side profile now. Yes. Talking about the side profile of these two cars, they share a lot of similar bits. For example, the roof rails over here, plastic cladding front and back, and the 16-inch alloy wheels. However, on the Renault Kaiga, you get red accents and those red calipers are missing on yours. I totally agree with you. My favorite also have to be these wheels. Now, when we look at the design aspect, you will see that the Franks offers a very subtle and curvaceous design where vis-a-vis -vis the Kaiga offers more curves and bulges. So therefore, it looks more sporty. But that said, from a differentiating factor of the variant, uh, is there any demarcation? So, I'm glad you asked. On the Franks, no. But on the Kiger, as you can see, there's a clear demarcation of which variant you're driving. So, at the back, there was a turbo badge and RXZ variant over here. So, it's a clear demarcation, again, which Maruti Suzuki Franks Yeah, this get. one does not offer a badge. But right. nevertheless, it does offer quite a few design elements like this chrome uh, tip, which is there on the windowsill. Uh, the chrome strip looks really nice. Does yours offer that? So yes, it doesn't get that, but anyway, you can get those aftermarket, right? This one also offers a 360 degree right, camera. Does right. yours? Yes, that's a major miss and I'd give you that. But I would like to talk on the certain feature bits that I mentioned earlier. So these roof rails, they have a maximum carrying capacity of 50 kg. And the ground clearance on this one is 205 mm. And for your reference, that is Tata Harrier territory. Well, mine also offers 190 mm of ground clearance and 
yes like you said they might not be functional but they are a design element nevertheless adds character to the side profile yes let's go to the rear profile now so just like the front the distinctive design philosophy is followed at the back of these two cars as well isn't it yes when we look at the fronks in particular the key highlight here has to be the led connected light bar this to me has become a norm these days as many manufacturers are offering this key design element in their products like the micro subcompact and compact suvs right. when i look at the rear profile here in particular i really like the roof mounted spoiler the fronks badge also gives which particular model we are talking about while the mild hybrid badge denotes its performance factor that given the dual tone bumper with uh, rear sensors also are an element of design to watch out for what are your thoughts on the kaiga so i clearly see that turbo badge looking at me right there which is something missing on this and that basically spells out that this is the 1 liter turbo petrol kaiga right and separates it from the other variants that it might come with apart from that i really like how neatly the reverse parking camera is fitted in the middle of the renault logo apart from that the dual tone bumper on these two cars look similar and also houses the reverse parking sensors as well and the roof mounted spoiler on this particular car looks very sporty yeah in comparison to the fronks it is sporty absolutely but to me it might be an art after market fitment so for that do let us know in the comment section below apart from that the rear parking camera is also there on the front so that is also a quite a needy uh, element of design and it uh, also uh, gives out the functionality of the 360 camera which the vehicle comes equipped with right right absolutely right that is something that the kaiga misses out on the 360 degree camera setup like you said as has been the norm with uh, major car manufacturers of offering connected tail light led bars on this one they've kept it very subtle and it still uh, appeals to the eye even though it is a little different from the usual norm when i look at both of them just on the basis of the light structure yeah. uh, you know i my personal favorite has to be this yeah. because it is more striking it's not connected but again adds that specific element of distinctiveness right 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 very conventional in that aspect All right, let's hop in to the inside now. Now that we've got down to driving, I really like the steering feel that the Fronx provides. That apart, okay, let's get into the specifics in terms of what powertrain do we get out here? So we get a one-liter, three-cylinder turbocharged engine, right? That makes ninety-nine bhp and a hundred and forty-seven newton meters of torque, and it is also paired with a mild hybrid system as well. Okay, so let me tell you that since I'm driving it, uh, the NVH levels are uh, restricted to the bare minimum, which is a good quality of the Fronks. While the clutch is also light, which means that driving in stop-go traffic is going to be a uh, added advantage without your knees getting much of uh, uh, work in terms of the workload from the clutch. Apart from that, the uh, gear shifts also very smooth. Uh, now let's talk about the ride and handling. Right. So while I was driving the Fronks, I could uh, feel that the steering input was very precise. The the in, the feedback from the steering was also very confident. Apart from that, uh, when you demand power from the engine, uh, it's ready to go. Very eager to perform. I mean, cross eighteen hundred RPM mark and it's ready to fly. and it doesn't feel like a three cylinder engine like you said the nvh level is very well balanced and controlled so yeah maruti has done a stellar job on the engine of this one also to the most important aspect what is the mileage on this so currently i mean given the fact that this is a turbocharged engine and uh, we've been testing it out so it's currently as i can see on the mid it's currently returning 13.8 kmpl which is not bad given the fact that we been drive testing it out extensively and it's still returning a mileage of 13.8 so not a bad figure with a ground clearance of 190 mm i think uh, that it does fairly well when it comes to our indian road conditions 
given the potholes and broken roads i think uh, whether you are seated in the front or the rear you don't really get unsettled right yeah yeah that's absolutely true also the uh, bumps absorption on the tuning part of the shockers or the suspension for that matter is fairly uh, sweet i mean maruti has really nailed it according to our indian road conditions as well so on the whole you would agree with me that this is more fun to drive and it provides that refinement that we require from a car of this stature uh, yes i'll have to give you that but on paper yes the kaiger is more powerful so on that note let's jump into the kaiger and see what all it has to offer all right right so now that we are driving the renault kaiger it's clearly evident that we are seated higher as you can see that the bonnet visibility is there right the bright landscape looks pretty good so it gives a suv feeling and it feels like you're driving an suv apart from that talking about the steering on this one so nothing fancy here but uh, it's a decent centered center weighted steering uh, not much of a feedback not much of feel chunky yes very lackluster sort of experience from the steering okay now let's get down to paper what kind of a power train does it offer so it comes with a similar sort of uh, amount of displacement when it comes to the engine like the frox so it has a 1 liter 3 cylinder turbocharged petrol engine and in terms of power delivery i think there the bhp is similar but when you look at the torque uh, there is a slight difference i think the kaiger is more uh, on the higher side right yes that is true it's a little higher on the torque on, side on that note does it pull as swiftly as the frox so i'm glad you asked that so there are three drive modes here so uh, switch it to sport mode and you can feel the extra torque that this car has also i'd like to mention that these uh, th- this drive mode wheel over here you can shift between drive modes on the fly there's no need to stop your car or put it to neutral so that is a very nice touch on the renault kaiger as well which is not there on the frox so just saying and it also gets a five speed manual gearbox right how was the feel of the gearbox So yes that is something that uh, the Frons aces when it comes to the clutch it's heavy the gearbox it's notchy so it, the Frons on the other hand does feel more refined on that one. and to add to that wow i think the nvh levels are also high on this one in comparison to that right i'll have to give you that as well the tuning of the Suzuki's 1 liter 3 cylinder turbocharged petrol engine is way better than this one it ten- this one tends to get a little noisier uh, especially when you are uh, revving it up and the overall nvh levels also are a little higher on the renault Kai. but i think what goes in its favor is its amazing ground clearance and given our indian road conditions broken roads and potholes are not that much of a problem for this particular car right absolutely 205 mm 190 on yours so that's a boon especially on our uh, indian road conditions also the absorption of potholes on this one as well i believe it's done uh, reno has done a really good job on that as well you had spoken about the clutch there is one factor that we need to keep in mind while driving that this car does not offer a dead pedal right right and there is also an obstruction of this tunnel right so on long drives i think that will also tend to be an issue for the driver especially that's true it could have done with a dead pedal for sure because that's a boon in uh, longer journeys highway routes but yes it does miss out on that how is it handling so <laughs> right so like i said when it comes to handling nothing exciting over here uh, very lackluster sort of feedback from the steering so on the whole would you agree with me that frongs is a well rounded product while this does the job but then again it's livable it's not that bad right uh, yeah i agree but i like to put it this way that both are different kind of animals in their own uh, rights right uh this is more difficult to tame especially in the sports mode and a little rough a little raw and yes like you said maruti frongs is a more well rounded well behaved sort of a 
product so yeah but yes definitely livable definitely enjoyable goods you would enjoy the good stance this offers and uh, the sort of feedback you get when you're on the road talking about the positives of maruti suzuki's trunk cabin has to be this hud heads up display the 9 inch touch screen infotainment system that offers android auto and apple carplay which is wireless you also get a wireless charger apart from that since i'm old school i like the analog and digital instrument cluster which looks classy am i missing out on anything else Oh, there? Yes, uh, a couple. In fact, there's auto dimming IRVM over here, and this also gets 360 degree camera setup. How is the quality of that? So I believe uh, it could have been a little better, right? But the competition does offer better quality. And there is no sunroof, as we can see. Yeah, yeah, that's a big miss. So that is something that customer nowadays want, and it's not there. So yeah. that is a miss. Yeah. Apart from that, how do you like the build and finish of the dashboard and the interior on the whole? So in this segment, the use of hard plastics is very common, and uh, the same is true for the Fronks as well. However, the quality over here is pretty decent. The multi-layered dashboard treatment is also very nice, and this color scheme that uh, Maruti has used also adds to the luxe quotient. Now let's talk about comfort. How are the seats in the front? So talking about seats this is a very good and very pleasurable seat to be in there's good amount of bolstering towards the sides so every time you sit in it feels like the seats hugging you giving you a very homely feeling right and longer routes be be it 500 kilometers or even beyond not a problem good amount of leg room over here as you can see also the same for the headroom so very good place to be in how's the under thigh support even the under thigh support right same uh, it's pretty pretty decent i am 57 so not a problem as you can see pretty good so you have lot of these cup holders uh, in and around to stock stock your bottle or knickknacks yeah. so that is one uh, benefit that you get out here however i did not like this uh, type a port for charging your phone uh, maruti could have given a type c charger instead which could have helped out more right Yeah absolutely I mean you'd have to use an adapter and since you've mentioned cup holders if you were to see there's no cup holder in front of this AC vent which is usually present in cars of this segment and it usually helps to cool down your beverages right so that that is a big miss for me okay or on the whole how did you find the cabin in especially in front so overall this is a pretty decently equipped cabin i believe and uh, the quality of uh, materials used is also very decent okay so now shall we jump at the rear and see what all it has to offer sure the seat that you see in front of me does not offer a rear pocket which is definitely a miss nevertheless what you do get are these two rear ac vents which keep you cool and these two charging ports one in the form of type a and the other in the form of type c there is also this little space to keep your knickknacks what else do you see over there in the cabin so i can clearly see this battery pack right in front of me which is a part of the mile hybrid system that the songs comes with apart from that the middle seat also gets a headrest over here but there's no armrest if you can see so that is a big miss for me apart from that uh, if you were to see there's a hump in the middle because of the transmission tunnel so whoever is sitting in the middle might be uncomfortable during longer journeys because of this uh, hump over here so uh, on the whole when you talk about comfort in the rear portion uh, what are your views so my analysis says that this is a good uh, bench seat for two passengers at max uh, headroom again is not a problem uh, i'm 57 again so not a problem even though this has a sloping roof line not a problem at all again knee room is plenty and again under thigh support just at the front seats is pretty decent so this is a good place to be in again so now why don't we go and check out the kaiger's cabin sure Now that we are inside the Renault Kaiger, I'd like to mention a couple of bits. So I'd like to start with this steering wheel, this leather wrapped steering wheel with red stitching across. This does feel sporty to hold. Apart from that, there's a digital MID, 
Now this digital MID gets even more special because of the drive mode selector over here. So every time you switch between sport, normal or eco mode, it does an animation dedicated to that uh, mode, driving mode and it does look nice. And towards my left, if you see there's an 8 inch infotainment unit which also gets wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Talking about wireless, you also get wireless charging over here. Apart from that, you also get a button to turn it on or off. On the same philosophy, if you see, there's a button over here. Now the Fronks might get ambient lighting. This also gets ambient lighting, but the add-on marks comes in the form of this button. So basically, you can control whether you want the ambient lighting or not with the press of a button. Does your Fronks get that? No, it does not. Yeah. So another marks goes to uh, the Renault Kaiga here, right? Apart from that, what's your take on this minimalistic sort of treatment to the dashboard? So I like the layout. I like the silver insert which has been given. Gives it a bit of character. But the build quality and fit and finish is not right up to the mark. What you also get to see are these twin glove boxes. And they can hold quite a lot of your stuff in terms of uh, the vehicle documents and other stuff. Now talking about the seats, how do you feel? What do you feel about them? So seats is something that I like to talk about compared to the Fronks. It's not as bolstered or as premium, but still, uh, nevertheless, it's very comfortable. Clocking thousands of kilometers, not a problem. And uh, yes, not. And I feel that it's a little wider. Probably I'm wrong, but I do feel that it's a little wider. So not a problem on that front as well. How's the under thigh support? And the same applies to under thigh support as well. Pretty much uh, decent enough under thigh support. Not a problem. Uh, I'd like to talk about these controls over here. So what's your take on these? So these look very classy in comparison to the Fronks. Actually, I like these toggle switches. Remind me of the aeroplane switches. Apart from that, uh, what the Fronks did miss out on the uh, sunroof. And this one also misses out. So... Uh, negative points to both the vehicles out here yeah apart from that what else do you get so apart from that uh, another thing that you get on the fronks is the use of storage spaces so uh, Renault has been very clever when it comes to storage spaces like you mentioned two glove boxes apart from that there's storage space over here and if you were to see under the armrest there's pretty much storage spaces and you get storage spaces for your beverages as well if you were to close it like this, this pretty much blends in well with the piano black finish, not a problem there as well. So pretty much practical and it gives you a lot of space to store your stuff. What do you think about what is this? Uh, do let us know in the comments guys. Apart from that uh, overall feel of the front uh, of the Kaiko. So this feels very raw like you said not as plush as the Frongs but yes livable not a problem at all. Now let's see what the back has to offer. Sure. Now that we are in the rear seat of the Renault Kiger, I can clearly see that the front seat offer rear pockets. Something that's not on the fronts. And if you were to notice, there's no hum, right? So the middle passenger won't be having any trouble in longer journeys. Apart from that, if you were to notice, there's an armrest here, right? It also gets a slot to put in your beverages another compartment to put in your smartphone so not a problem so marks to the Kiger over there as well however there are certain bits that i believe uh, Renault could have improved upon so firstly it's this door panel over here it's very basic it does get a piano black finish over here but it does feel very basic and yes the use of hard plastics apart from that i mean Renault did not give this a hump over here it did give an armrest over here but I could have used a headrest over here, right? For the middle passenger. That would have been great. All right, that's from my side. What about you? What do you notice? So, like you can see, it does get these rear AC vents. Though, you can see there is this 12 volt charging point here. It misses out on the type A and type C charging ports. You'll have to use a external charger to charge your electronics. Apart from that, now if I talk about the window, window itself, the rake is so high that it poses a problem for a person like me. I'll have to, when I want to look out, you know, I'll have to look out like this. So that is something that I feel was 
uh, is a bit of a negative apart from that what about the seat comfort so about the seat comfort i think this is again a very comfortable seat to be in not a problem going for longer journeys being chauffeured driven in this car not a problem good amount of headroom as well good amount of knee room as well so uh, i believe i can be in this place for a longer period so on the whole how is the experience you would so, say you would say that it is uh, decent right yeah yeah and i feel it's a little more roomier also because this does not have a sloping roof line it's a boxy suv so the, it feels more roomier than the france as well so pretty much decent enough cabin and more livable right absolutely verdict time so what are your thoughts on these two cars well after having compared them in detail there are quite a few takeaway points for example when i talk about the maruti suzuki fronks i liked its engine refinement comfort and performance this does not mean that the reno kiger is no less it offers performance but there are a few bits which can be troublesome but if you negate those then still it's a well rounded product moreover it's stance and the suv look are really working in its favor in comparison to the crossover look that the fronks offers now uday since you are from gen z and gen z generally like to be out there make a style statement for themselves so which one would you choose out of these two so i really like to agree with all your points especially on the kiger maintaining a suv ish stance and on that note my key uh, my car would be the reno kiger right because i really like to make a statement like that also the price point that it comes at the starting 1 liter turbo kiger is cheaper by about 50000 than the fronks and the range topping 1 liter turbo manual again is about 1.2 lakhs cheaper right so it's easier on the pocket as well and you get the performance Uh, yeah that said but then this is a nexa product it offers the premiumness but then of course you can you can give it little bit of that in terms of you know more of a style statement oriented product right absolutely uh, totally agree with the nexa experience part as well on that note that's it from our end do subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for more videos from kale nayi car hum hai na yaar <laughs>